Hello and welcome to Martin Maths. Today we will be discussing how to prove that the set of real numbers is uncountable. Now if you haven't seen our previous videos about the different sets of numbers and counting rational numbers, I suggest you do so before watching this video. Now unlike our previous videos where we counted the set of natural numbers and the set of integers and the set of rational numbers, this video is not going to be that simple. The set of real numbers contains some very uh, difficult numbers to uh, categorize, such as pi, e, and the square root of x. So it is best to consider the following relationship. Real numbers are equal to the union of rational numbers and irrational numbers. To make things simple, we will consider all real numbers between 0 and 1. So let's call that set x, and x is the set of all real numbers that are greater than 0 and less than 1. So this statement is read as the set of all x such that 0 is less than x, which is less than 1. x is an element of r. Now, what would the elements of set x look like? Let me just rewrite that statement over here. So let's give notations to the elements of set x. We have the first element as x1, the next element as x2, the next element as x3, and so on. Now since uh, x are real numbers, and they're greater than 0, but less than 1, their first part is going to be 0 point, 0 point, and 0 point. So here, uh, we can give the first digit after the decimal point a notation, such as x11, and then x12, x13, and so on. Here we can have x11. Sorry, here we can have x21, x22 and x23. Then here we can have x31, x32, and x33. So in general, xa is equal to the eighth real number after zero. And xab is the bth digit after the decimal point in x a. So how does this help us? So we have x1, we have x2, we have x3. Have we counted all the real numbers between 0 and 1? Well actually we can show that this method is flawed and this technique is called a proof by contradiction. So let's consider a new real number, y1, with digits y11, y12, and y13. So we can make sure that y is a completely different number by changing one digit in each of these numbers. And if you change digits, even just one, you create an entirely new number. So let's make sure y11 is not equal to x11, and y12 is not equal to uh, x22 and y13 is not equal to x23 and in, by ensuring that we can make sure that y1 is not equal to x1 y1 is also not equal to x2 and y1 is also not equal to x3 and if we do that for all the x's which are infinite and in theory, we can create an entirely different number that has not been accounted for in this organization system. To help you understand this, let's put some integers instead of this x11 and x12 and so on. So, here we have x1 equals 0 0.12345. Here we have x2 equals 0 0.24681. And here we have x3 equals 0 0.36972. And this is y1, 0 0.25183. So here y11, this digit, is equal to 2. 
and which is not equal to 1, which is x11. So y1 is not equal to x1. Now y12 is equal to 5, while x22 is equal to 4. But 5 is not equal to 4, so y1 is not equal to x2. Now, and now here, y13 is equal to 1, but x33 is equal to 9. So y1 is not equal to x3, since y13 is not equal to x33. So y1 is a completely different real number. And then using the same technique of changing just one digit, we can create y1, sorry, we can create y2, y3, y4, etc, etc. So this just proves that there are too many real numbers to take into account. We can never actually organize the entire set of real numbers and real numbers because we've just proved that even in between 0 and 1 there are infinite real numbers. So if we cannot categorize real numbers between these two integers then there is absolutely no chance that we can actually count real numbers in total. Thank you for watching this video and please like, subscribe and share to Martin Max.